Can you hear us? You can you hear me? We can. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. We really Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, this is great. So social security is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, it's the program a lot of people take for granted. Uh, but, you know, we pay into the system and we expect to provide it, it you know, for our basic needs should we become uh, unable to work or when we retire. But not all of the political leadership, obviously, feels the same way about this program. And as we prepare to vote for, hopefully, a new president, we should know what the stakes are for a program that without which millions more Americans would fall below the poverty line. Here to talk with us about this is an expert in this area, Alex Lawson. Alex is the executive director of Social Security Works, the convening member of the Strength and Social Security Coalition, a coalition made up of more than 340 national and state organizations representing over 50 million Americans. In your current role, Alex, uh, you coordinate the multifaceted education and advocacy. Are you going to read the whole thing? I <laughs> sure as hell am, man. I want the people to know just how much you do. In addition to the amazing intro that Jocelyn just gave you about your media empire that you also run, you know, on the side when you're not saving the world. So um, was your cape in the laundry today? You no, able- it's, it, it's, it's here. The closet's right there. I got a pirate costume uh, and a cape in there because you never know when you're going to need them. That's very right? true. That's true. So we were talking about, we're talking about the election and we're talking about, you know, we're going to elect Bernie Sanders, uh, Joe Biden, or Tr- Donald Trump as a nation in November. Can we talk about first where we are in terms of social security under a Trump administration? And then yeah. maybe you could talk about what it, what it will look like under each of these different potentialities. So I think um, you start with Donald Trump. So the man is just a, a pathological liar. Uh, and as president of the United States, it's uh, just horrible that that's a fact, but it is. So what Donald Trump did, if you remember back to 2016, 15, uh, he differentiated himself from the Republican orthodoxy uh, multiple times on stage by saying, Unlike these other Republicans, I will not cut your Social Security, your Medicare, your Medicaid. Uh, And he hammered the other Republicans with that message, knowing full well that the American people love Social Security overwhelmingly. Uh, More people believe in the Loch Ness Monster than want to cut (laughs) Social Security benefits. And it's not a Democrat issue or Republican issue. It's an across the board issue. I can go around the country and I do talking to folks that parking lots filled with Priuses, they love Social Security. Everyone's wearing camo NRA hats, they love Social Security. It does not matter. The only people who don't love Social Security are these billionaires on Wall Street, these greedy liars who just can't stand that they can't rob us of our money. They want to reach their hands into our pockets and steal our earned benefits. Now, Donald Trump sees that and understands the political opportunity. So he lies about what he is going to do. And it worked. Uh, seniors who do vote uh, more to the right, the left has to do a much better job of, of breaking through the propaganda machine that is convincing seniors to vote uh, for people. If you look at their preferences, they do not want social security cuts, they do not want Medicare cuts, they want lower drug prices. Uh, but you know, we see percentages of, of uh, seniors voting for the Republican party, which literally the first thing they do and this is under a Donald Trump administration, the first thing the Republican Congress does, actually, that's not true. The first thing they do is they try to eliminate the uh, the Office of Ethics. Uh, if you remember well, that. Of course. That I'm was surprised it didn't just explode with that when, them, when they got an office, that the whole office didn't just disintegrate somehow. The second thing they did uh, was they came after Social Security and Sam Johnson put in his bill to destroy the program. So what we've seen under Donald Trump is you remember Trump Care, dec- that would have decimated Medicare. Uh, it would have destroyed Medicaid, the largest provider of long-term care in this country, just wholesale. Medicaid would have ceased to exist and would have been replaced with nothing. No more nursing home care, no more at-home care. Long-term care, which you know averages uh, $90,000 uh, in many states, 
Um, I think that's actually the national average and it's way higher in some, some states. So that's what Donald Trump did. We defeated him legislatively, but then he moved to what he could do through the executive uh, office, which is a lot. And it has been a full attack on our earned benefits from the moment he got in office. Um, they, they always, they, they hide these cuts. They, they don't actually say, I'm gonna come over to your house, reach my hand in your pocket and steal your money uh, because everyone would be like, well, get the hell out of my house. Um, so what they do <laughs> is they make up like really confusing lingo that sounds good, but really yes. means destroy our earned benefits, which mm -hmm. is steal our money. Um, they block grant Medicaid. Uh, they have work requirements on Medicaid. Uh, they, they do all sorts of back of the house attacks on Medicare. And on Social Security, we've seen the largest assault on the program since Ronald Reagan. Uh, and we know uh, across the board, what this means is that people die. When you steal someone's benefits that they're relying on, people die. That's what Donald Trump is doing right now. Every once in a while when he's talking to his billionaire friends, either in Davos or he just did it yesterday on CNBC, um, they try, or maybe it was Fox News, I'm sorry, yesterday. One they, of those. <laughs> yeah, what, one or the other. But he was talking to the rich folks, right? When he's not lying to the people, but he's talking to actually his paymasters, he promises to cut Social Security. He mm -hmm. says, you know, we're going to cut it. They asked, what about entitlements? Are you going to cut entitlements? And he said, and this is important, he said, uh, I don't, the exact words are, I can find them, but the important thing is the way he, he set it up. He said, there will be cuts. So yes, we're going to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And then he said, but the growth is going to be so enormous, da, 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 da. So what everyone should hear there is he's saying that the economy is going to be growing hugely. And so the cuts to these programs have nothing to do with the economy. They have nothing to do with necessity. It's just because they want to cut these programs. He's saying that in the face of a, a good economy, which I don't think he will have, he would still cut these programs. That's Alex, Donald Trump, Alex, pathological you... liar, uh, works for the greedy liars on Wall Street and does everything he can to reach his hand into our pockets and steal our earned benefits. Alex, before we get on to what uh, social security would look like under a Bernie or a Biden presidency, can you talk about whether you have seen any evidence that people who once you know, were willing to vote for Trump because he promised not to cut their social security, are they becoming aware that he is making cuts um, through the back door, through the front door, through any avenue he has possible? Um, have you seen any sort of electoral revolt in that area? We are seeing, I mean, we saw a, a bunch, I mean, look, 2018 is what we saw, right? Like 2018 is evidence of the rejection of uh, Trump's uh, entire uh, worldview and him as a person. So yes, but we also are seeing that, because um, I, le I leave someone out here, there's the greedy liars on Wall Street, but then there's also their propaganda machine, the corporate media, who come after Social Security all the time. Sometimes if you want to like, you know, be nice to people, it's, it's something because a lot, the, the, most of the people in corporate media, you, you literally have millionaires paid by billionaires to tell, you know, non-millionaires uh, what, what's going on. And they just don't need social security. So they think of it as a like, oh, well, who, who would even notice a small in their eyes cut? And you're like, you obviously have never met real people. Um, so <laughs> the media yeah. does not tell the truth about social security, Medicare and Medicaid. And that's important for the Bernie Biden discussion coming up as well, because the corporate media have driven a uh, like propaganda attack for the last 30 years against social security. Uh, and, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of thing, stuff out there about, you know, Bernie Sanders uh, attack on the media and Trump also attacks the media. Trump attacks the media as an authoritarian. Uh, Bernie Sanders is making very valid critiques of the fact that the corporate media is actually run by the corporations that own it. And so yes. they can only tell the truth right up until the bottom line of the corporations are uh, impacted. So- and, Oh, sorry, Alex, I just interrupted you. 
interrupt yeah. away. Otherwise, I'll talk the entire time. And That's I will awesome. love every minute of it. <laughs> uh, no, but I think it's really important too, like as a resident campaign, I don't know, what would you call me? A campaign in bed, groupie, volunteer? Uh, these people are Expert. very- Expert. <laughs> oh, we both said the same thing. <laughs> uh, so the the Bernie Sanders campaign is highly respectful of the press. And I have seen this firsthand at every level, both with the senior staff and down to like the press volunteers that will be on the ground in any given state. Like they are highly cognizant of the fact that the media is an essential part of a rigorous democracy. I would like to tell a story from my time in Iowa. You guys realize I went to Iowa, right? Best days of my life. Glamorous place, the Midwest. And I saw Alex Lawson there, which was my, my favorite part about it. Uh, but there was this one night where I was helping with the press advance in a Jane Sanders event. And it was the same night of, of a Trump rally. So I'm out here like trying to make sure the press can get the best shots they can get, that they're getting the interviews they need. Like that is the Sanders campaign. How can the press get what they need from this event and be supported and get everything they need to get done? Meanwhile, Trump at his rally that same night kicked the journalists out. They were kicked out. Like, it's not the same thing. No. It makes me so upset when people the, compare the, Bernie and Trump. The disturbing part about that is that the press is still going to have a corporate spin and therefore not cover Bernie with the kind of eye that we would hope they would have. Alex, can you talk a little bit about um, what we're looking at in terms of Social Security under either a Biden or a Bernie administration as people right now? Um, you know, Bernie's very clear about his policies. Biden, I don't know what he stands for. Yeah, he so may have, I, he I, have I, I would, uh, I can, I can speak uh, on that at length here. Um, so uh, it's important to understand in this dynamic that literally the Republican Party is dedicated to destroying these programs. There's nothing else that they believe as highly as destroying these programs. Paul Ryan said that he would fantasize about cutting seniors Medicare while he was in the keg line in college, which is a deeply sick thing. What a uh, horrible to, to, person. I, I mean, sociopathic at the highest level. So understand that that's wow. what the Republicans always want to do, but also understand that they're not morons. Don't underestimate their political yes. ability to accomplish their goals, usually by getting the Democrats to do the dirty work uh, and that's a dynamic that is really important with Social Security. Mm -hmm. So what they did during the last six years of the Obama administration, which I call the age of austerity, in 2010, there was a turn by the Obama administration that kicked off with his State of the Union address that was a, a turn towards austerity, an absolutely non-science, anti-science, every economist rejects austerity as being both cruel and stupid in that it hurts people and it does not actually accomplish what it's supposed to do, like addressing the deficit or anything like that. So this turn was all political because the Tea Party came in and you know when, when, Repub when Democrats are in office, deficits are the most important thing in the world. And this is when you see the corporate media at their finest corporate media-ish. This is when they just lie. So the I minute, haven't heard any mention of deficits in the last four years. Exactly. As soon as the Republicans get in office, it goes back to Dick Cheney, deficits don't matter, which is actually much more of the truth than that deficits matter. Republicans are actually the best example of modern monetary theory out there is the way Republicans do this. They actually cut revenue while massively increasing spending, both of which are stimulative, uh, and it never actually uh, drives inflation up. They know that all the way back to Reagan, they do that. So what they do is they uh, increase a bunch of spending while doing tax cuts, which are poorly targeted. The spending is what drives the economic growth, but they point at the tax cuts and say, see what we did? This is, they only have a, one play, that's that. And then when Democrats are in office, it's, oh my God, the deficits are exploding, debt as far as the eye can see, 
woe is me, we don't want to do it, but we have to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. But they convince the Democrats to do it, and they start talking about the wow. grand bargain. That's what we faced for six years under Obama. Now, during that time, Joe Biden was the lead negotiator with the Republicans in the Congress, in the Senate, uh, more so than the House, but definitely he was the conduit. And the people who were working on that are actually involved in his campaign currently. Mm -hmm. So the initial thing was called the Bull Simpson Commission. And it's important to understand that basically the entire Democratic establishment was behind this. They, they were like, okay, this is what's going on. Obama wants it. The media are saying we need to do it. There's this bipartisan commission. We're all gonna hold hands and hurt the American people. And somehow it, the fact that we all do it together makes it okay. It was literally, it was super lonely at that time. There, this is 2010. Mm -hmm. There were two people who were consistently with us then. Uh, let me just say, because we're on this independent media thing. Let me guess who it is. <laughs> what I did, the media would not cover what was going on. We were pitching and the media's like, no, no, they're not going to cut your social security. And we're like, it's literally the whole point of this commission. So I took my phone and I live streamed the closed door of the commission every single week for two hours, just stood outside of it, live streaming it from my phone to Fire Dog Lake uh, every single time. Uh, the New York Times wrote it up because they were kind of outside and they wanted to know what was going on inside. And I was the only story, the weird guy live streaming a closed door for hours every week. So the next uh, week, Alan Simpson, who is one of the leads of the BS Commission, he's the S in BS, um, and he gave me a seven minute long impromptu uh, interview where he's like, yep, we're going to cut Social Security. That's what we are doing in behind these closed doors and sort of blew the whole thing open. Before that, there was one person who you could only Good job, count Alex. on. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. He literally, and at the time, people have to understand, I'm like, like an indie band. I have like an indie band shirt of Bernie Sanders. This is way <laughs> before Bernie Sanders was Bernie Sanders, right? Like this, we would do events with Bernie Sanders where we would be like, we will not cut benefits and uh, no press would show up. Right. Like yeah. I would have to hustle as hard as I could to get turnout to these events. And Bernie Sanders was the only one who was standing up and it was deeply unpopular at the time. Mm -hmm. He was coming under enormous pressure uh, from the from the Democratic caucus to fall in line and just get behind these cuts. And their argument somewhat goes like, hey, you should let us cut Social Security benefits because we'll cut them less than the Republicans. It's the whole idea of like vote for us, we'll do less of the bad stuff than the other guys. And Bernie Sanders was like, no, we're, how about no bad stuff? How about we actually do good stuff? And he started talking about expanding social security with us, with Elizabeth Warren, uh, with now we have a growing crew of Democrats who are standing up and fighting back, uh, Keith Ellison, Raul Grijalva, Jan Schakowsky, others, and we shifted the entire debate from how much are benefits going to be cut to how much are benefits going to be expanded. Uh, Bernie Sanders is incredibly, like, Bernie Sanders is who got Hillary Clinton to uh, actually embrace expanding social security. I mean, we take a small part of that too at Social Security Works. Um, uh, Barack Obama got on board. Joe Biden got on board this year. I'm sorry, last year, 2019. Uh, now, this is the center of the Democratic Party. But I tend to believe it matters where you stood during the lonely fights, right? Like, I, I like uh, Bernie Sanders' first album uh, because I really think it, it, it expresses who he was. He was willing to stand up to the entire media establishment, to everybody in Washington, D.C., who is saying, we just got to cut benefits. Uh, and he allowed a movement to be built around him. He didn't, he, he didn't block it. We were able to coalesce. We now have 1.5 million people who we talked to, and we were able to coalesce that movement around Bernie Sanders as the megaphone for the movement to protect Social Security and shift the conversation to expansion. So 
I think now, and I, I, I can kind of conclude with this, we have a movement, we will never stop. Movements don't stop, movements can't be defeated. People who don't understand that are, are gonna be in for a shock. I will never let social security benefits be cut. Uh, we will fight against anybody who does that. In fact, we're gonna expand benefits. But when you look at who are we gonna have to fight who are we gonna to have to box in and who are we just gonna know is going to fight with us to expand social security? I think there's an incredibly clear contrast in the history between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders on social security. We have a number of people in our chat making comments, but I just wanna ask the chat people here on Twitch, um, if you, have a if you have a question you wanna direct directly at Alex, please just write question and all in caps your question and we will shoot it over to him as we come uh, to the end of our interview. Um, Alex, how would you suggest that I convince my mother who is living on her social security that perhaps Bernie might be a better choice? <laughs> I spoke with her yesterday and, um, you know, she, she talked, she said that we talked about Medicare for all. And she, she said, well, Biden's going to go back to Obamacare. Then he's going to expand Obamacare if he can. So I think it's going to be okay under a Biden. She doesn't, she has been, you know, she's in heavy duty Fox news, Sinclair media, corporate media land in upstate New York. And I didn't push back uh, because I wanted to make sure I could do it in the most effective way. Uh, what came to me was, mom, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are gonna cut your social security. <laughs> Hello, your kids are not millionaires. We cannot support you. And we want you to be healthy and strong forever. Um, what are your thoughts on how we can get this message out to people who are, you know, likely you know who are democrats going to vote for democrats but perhaps don't know how risky a biden vote would be in this area yeah i think it's just all about um just getting the facts out there because the corporate media have just like that whole story i just told um basically your viewers and you know uh i i, I literally built a radio station because the corporate media was so bad uh, and would not let our, our, our story, our, our facts get out there. Uh, so we need truth tellers to just tell the story. Bernie Sanders came to Congress to fight for seniors. You can check him way back, uh, 91, when he, right, like as far back as you go, he's saying the same thing absolutely we're not going to balance the budget on the backs of the poor, seniors, veterans. I mean, this is his thing that he's always believed in. He's fought for expanding benefits for literally for decades. Joe Biden now is at expanding uh, social security, which I think is great. I like it when people change in my direction. Um, but it's important to remember that Joe Biden continues to say, it's like a central part of his message is that he's gonna work with Republicans. What do Republicans want? They do not want anything other than to destroy our social security. There's no other thing. It's their driving ideology. They steal our money and they give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. It doesn't matter which order they do it in. Now they've given our money to their criminal friends on Wall Street, and then they're gonna try to steal it by cutting our benefits. If you are open to working with Republicans, Mitch McConnell, this guy goes on television all the time and talks about cutting our social security, Medicare, and Medicaid. He, Biden has said that you know after Trump, it's going to like return to before. I fought the before, it was six years they were coming after our benefits and yeah. we barely won. So like, no, we do not want to work with the Republicans. And I think if you wanna to talk to your mother about you know, what she can do, if she is going to be voting for Biden, then I think it's incredibly, it's incumbent on her in fact, to talk to his campaign, to make him promise that, when he says he's gonna vote uh, work with Republicans, he does not mean on cutting our benefits. He is never going to cut even a single penny from our benefits and in fact is going to expand social security. And he does have a plan for that, but he needs to say that, that when he talks about working with Republicans, he does not mean to cut our benefits. Because right now, 
When he says that, that's what it means. Bernie oh. Sanders, on the other hand, is going to lead the movement to expand social security. As long as that man is around and people are listening, that is his fight. He's going to fix the problems with Medicare, add vision, add dental, add hearing, add long-term care, no more co-pays, no more premiums, no more deductibles, uh, uh, drug prices, no more massive increases in drug prices. In fact, you get sick, you get the care you need, including the drugs that you need, and the most that you can pay out of pocket for drugs is $200 a year. Um, so that's Bernie Sanders. He's a champion for seniors. Joe Biden has a record that we can check. And he always says, look at my record. His record is We've terrible, yeah. terrible on this. So <laughs> Alex, it, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, what what do you think our viewers now we have I have two questions coming up for you. We have an international viewership. Uh, so one of the questions I'm going to pose is um, how important is a strong American social security net to the rest of the world as other governments start to think, hey, maybe America doesn't need such a strong social security net. We can cut it ov over here. Um, and then what what actions would you suggest people take in order to continue to, in addition to just electorally fight for the candidate that they believe in, um, what other actions can people take to make sure that their social security and the social security for their loved ones is uh, to steal a, a word from Al Gore in a locked box? No. A growing Gorsh. locked box. We hate, we hate that messaging. It makes it seem like uh, the money has to, the money's there. The only way they can take the money is by cutting our benefits. There is no box there is, that they can take money out of. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, but that Al Gore did us such a disservice because I, what- I apologize. What, what but, the plutocrats do, but it's an important note. I wanna tell you what how they make this work because this is what is gonna happen. As soon as the Democrats in office, they're gonna deficit scaremonger. And what they're going to say is something like, look, we love social security. It's just that the money's not there. And there's this whole thing, the money's all been spent. Uh, and people believe that. They believe that the money's not there. So uh, they accidentally told the truth in an interview one time, um, this billionaire's mouthpiece said, the goal is to get, is to convince people that they're gonna get nothing so that they will accept less than they're owed. Think about how cynical that is, wow. but also think about how that works. It, it is exactly what they're trying to do. They convince young people that even though we're paying into the system, we'll never see any benefits. If that were true, all young people should be in the streets with pitchforks and torches because they would be robbing us of all of our money, uh, every paycheck. But the money is there and is there for us as long as we don't let them cut benefits. For the rest of the world in our peer nations, um, in advanced economies, big economies or rich countries, they do a much better job with their social security systems and their retirement security systems than us. Um, we are always exporting our bad ideas. That's like one of America's pastimes. Um, so it, it is critical that we, you know, like what you're seeing in England with the privatization push on the NHS that's a huge thing coming from America, trying to create this America, UK, you know, sell off the public assets as quickly as possible. It's critical for the entire world that we don't let this ideology win. What the ide ideology is, is chaos. Because systems that work, like social security, like Medicare, like public education, they are not profitable for Wall Street. They profit off of chaos. They profit off of things that don't work, like our healthcare system. Our healthcare system's not broken. It works perfectly. It's just a wealth extraction system. It's not designed <laughs> to deliver healthcare. It's definitely not designed to stop a pandemic. It's designed to make a very small number of people insanely rich so that they can ride around on golden uh, jet skis that come out of their golden yachts or whatever it is that they do. Um, <laughs> How people can fight back, they have to raise our voices. This is, this is the truth. Movements cannot be defeated. We can only give up. So never give up because the only thing that beats money power is people power. And when we all stand together and raise our voices, we can't be ignored. They can ignore one of us, but when there are millions of us raising our voices together, 
They have to listen and we will win if we stay together and keep fighting for the world that we want to live in. And you can go to my website, socialsecurityworks.org uh, and find everything that you need to you know, join that movement. Socialsecurityworks.org. You can find more information. I'll put the link in the chat here. This has been such a very, very important uh, conversation. And I thank you very much. I've decided what I'm going to do is clip this link off of our Act TV Facebook page, send it to my sister so she can show it physically to my mother. Okay. So I don't have to say anything to my mom. Hey, you can give her you my have email. already too. said it. You can give her my email. I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll send all the- Call the her, she would love you. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You know, we have a question coming in from the chat. Um, the question is how much money has actually been taken out of social security by the government to pay other bills? Zero. Um, so this is, it can get super technical quickly, but literally this is, there is no ability for the government to use social security premiums for anything other than to pay benefits and to administer the program to pay benefits. Um, no money has ever been taken out. The only way you can take money out of social security is by cutting benefits. So all of the money that we pay into the system is there and it has functioned perfectly for over 85 years through boom time and bust, through war and peace, through sickness and health, social security has been the rock that we can count on. It has never missed a single payment. That is the system. They want to convince people that the money's not there so that you're scared. Because if you think you're gonna get zero and then they come back and say, let me give you 70 cents, you're probably gonna take the 70 cents because it seems like it's 70 cents more than zero. But in reality, what you've done is given away 30 cents because you were going to get every dollar that you're owed. That's what Social Security does. We're speaking with Alex Lawson, the Executive Director of Social Security Works. Alex, thank you so much for being here with us today and for your continued work for uh, economic justice for people in this country. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Wait, is he leaving? Alex. Yeah, he's leaving. Jocelyn, don't fuck up the interview. They have to have a space to cut it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. No, okay. It's over. You can talk amongst yourselves now. Now it's all cash because they're cutting it. We're putting it on our Facebook page. We're putting it on our YouTube. So, you know, the interview has to be kind of formal in the moment. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, of course. Get out of here. You, no, you, you, know, you know, know. Wait, let me ask you a final follow-up question. That's not, that's now it's more casual. Alex, how did you become such a, like a passionate advocate for this? You know, usually people have something in their past or uh, did you just see the injustice? How did you become you? So I, I didn't actually come into any of this through politics. I, I worked in outreach HIV clinics. Um, so after college, I got a, my uh, undergraduate degree in philosophy and mathematics, um, oh, which was wonderful, but did not give me a sort of uh, uh, where to go. And yeah. at the time I thought basically you could be a, a doctor or a lawyer. Um, and then I am a liberation theologist. So I, I believe in a preferential option for the poor. Uh, and so I, I looked around and I found outreach clinics is where I thought I could figure out if I wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, I won't tell the whole story because it's, it's kind of long, but um, uh, I, I basically uh, found that I wasn't going to be a doctor because I, uh, I basically, I'll, I'll just tell it really quickly. I had oh, heck, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> I, it's all casual now. So I had an amazing um, client uh, who... Uh, had zero T cells. He was a refugee from the south of Sudan, and um, he uh, we he came over to Chicago where I was at the time, uh, and he started on antiretrovirals, which are amazing. Yeah, the Lazarus effect. He basically came back to life. Um, he had tuberculosis, which is one of the main uh, killers of folks with immunocompromised of immunocompromised folks um, in Africa especially malaria and tuberculosis. So he had generalized tuberculosis and I was his caregiver as a paraprofessional, but he kind of had a difficult time deciding that I wasn't his doctor. He would always just tell, like call me his doctor. And I'm like, I'm not your doctor. I'm like your paperwork doer. Um, Cause like the system didn't make too much sense to him. 
um, having spent over a decade in refugee camps. So one time I come into the room to fill out papers with him and he goes, look, it's getting better. And he had generalized tuberculosis. He lifted up his shirt to show me the generalized tuberculosis as basically a physical, it's like a hole in his lung. Uh, and I passed out in the exam room. Uh, I held the door jam though. So I actually like passed out like this on the door, which happens, your muscles just lock. So I, I came to and I was still on the door jam. I'm like, not a doctor. <laughs> so, yeah, I have the same problem. I can't so do that it. one. Was, so then I was like, okay, uh, maybe I'll look into this law thing. But I came to, to find over and over again that policy was where we were just getting smashed in the face, that there's all this policy that is, uh, that is aimed at hurting poor folks, that is actually aimed at redistributing wealth up. Um, and one system that I encountered over and over again, it was like, it was, it was a almost miraculous thing because if we could get it, if we could get people the benefits that they'd earned on social, with social security, uh, disability benefits, uh, it was like, now a person could live with some dignity. Now they weren't going to die on the street, literally. Uh, and I saw this system and how fundamental it was. And, you know, I was young at the time. I, like a lot of people, you know, I knew nothing about social security. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing this and I'm like, wow, this is an amazing system. Uh, it's also where I learned, you know, I'm seeing how broken our healthcare system is, but the systems that do work, Medicaid, Medicare, social security is starting to come into focus for me uh, that that's why we're not hearing about them. You know, I, d I don't have a, a super coherent analysis at the time. I just, keep seeing like pharma reps and and I actually came to Washington DC to get my masters to to rebuild the pharmaceutical industry uh, and build it build one based on justice uh, first to dismantle the abhorrent a immoral one that we have right now and then build one based on justice but besides the pharmaceutical stuff what I saw were these three systems that continually worked uh, and I've been a single payer, you know, Medicare for all person ever since my time in a clinic um, where I would just fill out oodles of paperwork, just uh, my job, I was literally a paperwork person. Um, and, and then I continued, I moved to DC, got my master's, kept working in HIV clinics here. And um, uh, so that's basically how I learned. I don't about understand how, why it is we cannot see your halo because <laughs> I mean, really, since the moment I met you, I was like, this guy's the real deal. And it's, it's really nice to know you. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And I hope we can be helpful as we, as we continue to build our media empire here. It's the, this is the media revolution. I'm serious about this. Like, um, the political revolution is uh, hit uh, some serious speed bumps. And a lot of it is because we have not been able to foment a media revolution yet. We're in the middle of it. Uh, with it was shows like this and you know shows out of we act radio we just launched a new show in partnership with means tv yesterday which really? is oh, yeah. extremely exciting someone um, actually just asked it? me to host a show on means tv <laughs> anyway and and uh do so anymore. it's like we're we're making progress on the media revolution you know tom hartman for example is one of the biggest truth tellers out there um and bernie sanders if you ask him in 2016, one of the big factors uh, that he, he credits is, is Tom Hartman because he'd go all over the country and people would know who he was because he used to do an hour of Tom Hartman yeah. every single week. Lunch um, with Bernie, right? Lunch Friday with lunch Bernie. With Bernie. Yeah. And I, I uh, awesome. guest host Hartman show often uh, when he was here in DC. I don't do it much anymore. Uh, love Tom Hartman. And seriously, I when I go and speak or I go to conferences, People who come up to me, it's always because they're like, oh, I see, I know you from Tom Hartman and you're, you're, you know, I love your passion and your hatred of pharma or whatever it is. But the power of being able to tell our own story uh, is, is so key. So yes, the media revolution uh, is, is critical to our actual success on any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate everything that you do. And I'm, again, I'm really glad uh, to be a part of this movement with you. It's great. Let's do this. 
All right. Well, please come back and keep us filled in on everything social security related. And also you'd be a great guest to talk about the independent media and the state of that. So anytime you want me to just talk, uh, you know, I like, and I, I enjoy doing that. So, uh, and I, I love your show and your audience. Uh, so let's do it. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, we will see you soon. Bye, Alex. Bye. Bye.